Hi and welcome everyone, I'm Gavin Lon. We're comparing Blazor to React in this video. This is a subject very close to my heart, but I have to admit I'm a bit conflicted about You're it. Tearing me apart. I'm very familiar with both Blazor and React, and I really love both of these technologies. So is Blazor better than React? Let's find out. Let's first look at a brief overview of these technologies. Let's start with React because it is the older of the two technologies. React was released in 2013 and was developed by Facebook. React facilitates the breaking up of the UI user interface into smaller reusable components. After its release, React soon became renowned for its efficient rendering and performance capabilities. React is an open source JavaScript library and its core feature is the virtual DOM. The virtual DOM is lightweight in memory and allows for minimal updates being made to the actual DOM as a result of user interactions with the relevant React created web pages. The virtual DOM is a core reason why React is so efficient. Blazor is relatively new and was released in 2018. It was developed by Microsoft. The component-based approach to breaking up the UI, like with React, is fundamental to the architecture of Blazor applications. Instead of writing these components using JavaScript like with React, with Blazor, the developer can use c -sharp and .NET. Blazor is known for having two main hosting models that can be leveraged in order for lightning-fast re-rendering of components to occur as a result of users interacting with relevant Blazor created web pages, namely Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. Note that with the release of .NET 8, as well as being able to leverage server side rendering and streaming rendering, you'll also be able to leverage Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server components within one project. Blazor WebAssembly is built on the WebAssembly technology, a low level virtual machine that enables Blazor WebAssembly code to run at near native speeds in the browser. So with Blazor WebAssembly, c -sharp and .NET runs on top of WebAssembly within the browser. With Blazor Server, the c -sharp and .NET code runs on the server. A signal R connection is maintained between client and server. So when the user interacts with the relevant web pages, which are made up of Blazor Server components, the changes created as a result of relevant user interactions with the relevant web pages are calculated on the server and then pushed to the client via the signal R connection. The relevant changes are then rendered to the user's browser. Both these technologies, Blazor and React, can be used for the creation of high quality user experiences on the web and are excellent for the creation of modern, scalable web applications. Let's look at the similarities between Blazor and React. The obvious similarity is that these two technologies are both primarily used for the creation of SPA or single page applications. As discussed, Blazor and React both use a component based approach to creating reusable interactive UI elements. They can both be leveraged for creating highly scalable UIs that quickly and efficiently update a web page with only the changes made through users' interaction with that web page. So with these technologies, the entire web page does not need to be refreshed as a result of the user changing the state of a particular web page through interacting with it. Only the relevant parts of the web page that need to be changed are updated. So this results in an excellent and smooth UX user experience. Both technologies can leverage third-party state management libraries. With Blazor, you can leverage Fluxor or Blazor State for this purpose. To learn more about Fluxor, please navigate to this URL. To learn more about Blazor State, please navigate to this URL. With React, you can leverage Redux to handle state management from a single source. To learn more about Redux, please navigate to this URL. Let's look at the main differences between Blazor and React. React is JavaScript based and Blazor is .NET and C Sharp based. With the Blazor WebAssembly technology, C Sharp and .NET run within the browser on the WebAssembly technology. 
React components are written using a unique JavaScript extension known as JSX. JSX stands for JavaScript XML. So through JSX code, you can mesh HTML-like syntax represented in the XML with JavaScript behavioral functionality in order to create React components. With Blazor, the UI components are created using special c -sharp classes known as Razor components. These Razor components are implemented using c -sharp code for behavioral functionality and HTML is used for the web page's markup. With React, the JSX code is transpiled into JavaScript code before code is run within the user's browser. JSX code cannot be understood directly from the browser and therefore needs to be transpiled into JavaScript. With Blazor WebAssembly components, c -sharp and .NET runs on top of the WebAssembly technology, which is a low-level virtual machine that enables code to be run at near native speeds within the browser. React leverages a virtual DOM, which means that fewer updates need to be made to the actual DOM, which results in fast, efficient re-rendering of React components in the user's browser. React applications generally have faster initial load times than Blazor WebAssembly applications because with Blazor WebAssembly, the .NET runtime and libraries need to be downloaded to the browser. However, mixed mode rendering, especially auto mode, offered with the release of .NET 8 could provide much faster initial load times for Blazor applications. Blazor server applications already offer much faster load times than Blazor WebAssembly applications. But latency can be an issue due to a signal R connection needing to be maintained between client and server. At present, React has broader browser compatibility, including support for older browsers. Blazor WebAssembly has limited support for older browsers due to its reliance on WebAssembly. WebAssembly can enable better performance for applications where computationally intensive tasks need to be executed. So in this case, Blazor WebAssembly components may perform better than React components. The Blazor community is smaller than React's community, in part because it is a far newer technology. But it is steadily growing in size, and Blazor has the advantage of Microsoft investing heavily in Blazor. So Blazor benefits from the support of a steadily growing community and the support of Microsoft. React has a mature and vast ecosystem. This ecosystem provides numerous tools, libraries, and resources for developers to utilize in their projects. Blazor has a steadily growing ecosystem. The number of tools, libraries, and resources are increasing for developers to leverage in the creation of their Blazor applications. So, which of these technologies should we choose? As is mostly the case when comparing two great technologies, the answer invariably is not straightforward. When to use Blazor. A strong case for using Blazor is pretty obvious. If you are, for example, working on a project with a team of developers that mostly have .NET and c -sharp skills, I would definitely advise you to use Blazor. You'll avoid the need to learn JavaScript and the unique concepts like JSX and the various hooks inherent in React applications. If your application requires computational intensive tasks to run, Blazor WebAssembly may be the technology for you because Blazor WebAssembly runs on the WebAssembly technology that can run code at near native speeds. If you are developing a web application that requires a lot of real-time updates to the UI from the server, Blazor Server would be a great choice. Examples of real-time functionality are dashboard UIs and chat functionality. Bear in mind that a possible disadvantage of Blazor Server is latency caused through maintaining a persistent signal R connection between client and server. For applications that require a full stack solution, Blazor is a great choice where you can leverage C-sharp and .NET for all aspects of the project. So, for example, front-end and back-end functionality. Your UIs can be developed using .NET and C-sharp for building Razor components. Your server-side code, for example, database interaction code running on the server, can also be written using C-sharp and .NET. So, let's look at use cases for React. 
for large-scale front-end applications, React's vast ecosystem and component-based architecture make it a great technology for building large-scale applications where efficient rendering can be leveraged. This component-based architecture also helps with code maintainability. So React is great for building applications that require complex UI designs. React can provide faster initial load times due to generally smaller bundle sizes needing to be downloaded to the browser. This is critical for providing a great user experience and better SEO. If your team of developers mainly have JavaScript skills, it is going to give your development time advantage and be more cost effective to use React for the development of a project that requires this type of technology. React at present has broader browser support. So, if your application requires a broad range of browser support, React may be a great choice. WebAssembly, for example, is not compatible with a lot of older browsers. So you can see that each of these technologies have their pros and cons. It often depends on your particular context as to which of these great technologies you choose to develop particular applications. Your choice of which of these technologies to learn may come down to, for example, career aspirations. If at the moment salary is your primary concern, you might start by researching salaries paid to React and Blazor developers by companies in and around the area in which you live. If you are already skilled as a .NET developer, learning Blazor is obviously going to be far easier to learn. React has unique concepts that may involve a steeper learning curve, for example, JSX, Java XML, which is a syntax extension to JavaScript and is used for implementing components in React. You may simply have a personal preference for React or Blazor based on the way the code looks. Either way, these are both amazing technologies and based on criteria like performance, community support and future capabilities, I think choosing between these technologies is rather difficult. So is one technology better than the other? In this case, this question is not straightforward to answer. Please let me know in the comments section which of these technologies you prefer and why. Please check out some of the video links I've included in the description of this video where I explore the new features and enhancements for Blazor that will be included with the official release of .NET 8, which is due to be released next month, November 2023. These features include allowing mixed mode for rendering components, i.e. Blazor WebAssembly components and Blazor server components from within one project. You'll also be able to leverage server-side rendering and streaming rendering along with Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor server components from within one project. The inclusion of server-side rendering and streaming rendering can provide many advantages like faster initial load times, enhanced form handling, as well as better SEO, while still maintaining the responsiveness effect expected in SPA technologies. So with growing support from the community and Microsoft, Blazor no doubt has a bright future. React has a well-established, mature, robust, and vast ecosystem. It also has massive community support and an excellent track record. Both Blazor and React are awesome. Please let me know your thoughts on these great technologies in the comments section. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. I've recently joined X, formerly Twitter, so it would be great if you followed me on X. My username is at Gavin Digital. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.